Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for ending your Trailhead DX experience with us. This is the last session on the Summit Theater stage. Um, so we appreciate you coming to spend time to learn about the Apex Debugger. Uh, my name is Vivek M. Chawla, and this is my colleague, Danny Chang. Uh, a little bit about us. Danny and I are both ISV technical evangelists uh, with Salesforce. So we, we work, we help ISV partners um, uh, be successful on the App Exchange or as OEMs, um, and that's our, that's our day job. And part of what we do uh, within our team is we specialize in different technologies, and Danny and I are specialists in Apex. And so that's why we're here today to talk to you about the Apex debugger. Here's what I hope you'll learn from today's session. Um, first, we're going to give you kind of an overview of the debugger, and, and just quick show of hands, uh, who here has actually used the debugger? OK, good. Um, who here has heard about the Apex debugger before Trailhead or you know, kind of for the last six months or so? And who is just hearing about the debugger today when you saw the session? OK, okay good. So I think I've got enough information to, to cover this for, for just about everybody. Um, so we're going to talk about what the debugger is. We're going to go through how to set up and start a debugging session. Um, I'm going to show you, well, I won't show you. Danny here, he will actually run us through a demo where he will show us you know, how to use the debugger to solve um, a, a, a pretty tricky kind of debugging challenge. And then I'll take us home by talking about special considerations when you use the debugger and the roadmap, you know, what's in the future for the Apex debugger. Um, with that, last one of these slides you'll see for a little while. Uh, Forward-looking statements, Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Uh, please make any purchasing decisions based on generally available features and not uh, forward-looking uh, roadmap or, or other items that we might talk about. OK, so what is the Apex Debugger? Well, at its core, fundamentally, the Apex Debugger is an interactive debugger. And as an interactive debugger, it's got a number of key advantages, starting with the fact that you can set breakpoints. You know, basically, you can say, you know, on line 36 of this class, I want to stop execution, and I want to see what's going on inside of, uh, of that execution context, inside of that, that code. Now, when you stop to look at what's going on, the next part of an interactive debugger is the ability to step through, to say, OK, I want to go line by line, or maybe skip a bunch and go to another breakpoint later. But I want to see piece by piece, bit by bit, what's going on. And when I talk about see what's going on piece by piece and all that, the, the superpower of an interactive debugger is this ability to view variables and view the call stack. So as variables are created, as values are set or are changed, that's something that we get to see in real time as you step through your code with an interactive debugger. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is this any better from debug logs? You know, after all, debug logs are free, while the Apex debugger does or can, at least, for, for in some cases, carry an additional cost. And here's how I like to look at it. At debug logs, it's, it's like this. Um, it's like doing an autopsy. You can get a lot of information. You can see everything that happened. But it is a 100% post-mortem exercise. On the other hand, the interactive debugger is a lot like taking an MRI. You get to see in depth, in detail, what's happening. Um, but you get to do it while the subject is still breathing and not dead. Um, and that brings me to one of my first points about the Apex debugger specifically. Because it's an interactive debugger, um, you know, there's, the, there's the chance that you're going to be holding resources as, you've, as you've, you're, you're basically stopped execution. You're holding resources open that in a multi-tenant environment, somebody else might need. So for instance, if, if Danny is, is doing work debugging, and I come over to his desk and start bugging him about what movie we're going to see this weekend, um, if someone else was waiting for the database connection that is stuck um, while he's doing some debug work, that's, t that's a resource that's being taken away from someone else. So Salesforce um, having our 
production customers have the best possible speed and experience is, is job one for us. And so we don't allow debugging in production orders at all. We only allow debugging on sandbox uh, pods, sandbox instances, sandbox works. Now, diving a little bit deeper, um, there are two flavors of the Apex debugger. There's a standard version that's used by customers to debug code that's inside of the org that they own, or orgs that they own. Um, and then there's an ISV customer debugger version. And this is meant for our ISV partners to be able to debug code in orgs that their customers own. Now, let's look at the standard debugger first. So let's take the, the use case of a, of a customer who wants to debug code in one of their orgs. Well, the first thing that you need to do in that case is make sure that you have the, the license to use the debugger. Now, the license um, is, is set up like this. You have one session license so that one developer can have an active debugging session with, um, with any one of your sandbox orgs. If another developer wants to use that uh, or wants to debug, they would, you would need another session or the first person would have to terminate theirs so the second person can take it. Now, the, um, the debug license comes as a default part. You get one license if you're in an unlimited or performance edition org. Enterprise edition orgs, this is uh, an additional feature or, or an add-on feature, so you'd have to talk to your AE to, to get it added to your org. But unlimited and performance org users, you already have the debugger. Now, let's say the developer is going to try to develop co or debug code in one of the sandboxes orgs. They would create a project in Eclipse, connect to that sandbox, and when they do, you can see that the debug license decremented by one. And now, like I said earlier, if someone else wants to debug, um, they have to wait their turn while the first person finishes up their session. For ISVs, it's a little bit different. ISVs, same situation. You, you want to try to debug against a sandbox. But in this case, you're trying to debug against a sandbox that your customer owns, not that you own. So that ISV developer doesn't have direct access to those sandboxes. What ISV developers do have access to is a license management org. And through that license management org, they can connect to those sandboxes. So in this case, that debug license for the ISV customer debugger is applied to the LMO. And same thing, um, you know, once the ISV developer connects to the LMO, that lets them connect to one of the sandboxes. And just like the, the standard debugger, that license count decrements. And if somebody else wants to debug, they've got to wait um, till the first person is done. So that's, that's kind of an overview. Now let's, let's get into the specifics. You know, how do you set up and start a debugging session? And these are going to be pretty quick. This is just going to give you the highlights, because Danny's actually going to walk us through this. We're going to see it in real time. So we're, we're almost done with the slides uh, uh, before the demo. Uh, setting up the debugger, first make sure the org has access. We talked about that. Next, you want to install or update uh, the force.com IDE for Eclipse. And the reason for that is that right now, you can only um, launch a debugging session and use the debugger from Eclipse. I'll talk a little bit more about the future of that, but for right now, uh, it's just in Eclipse. And then finally, there's, there's um, a couple of permissions that you actually have to set um, for those users that you want to give access to the debugger to. Um, best way to do that is with a permission set. And again, Danny's going to show us what that looks like. Once it comes time to actually start a session, it's pretty straightforward in the customer use case. Um, create the project, connect it to the sandbox, create a debug configuration, apply it to your project, launch it, and then you're off to the races. Now, I promise you I get to the demo, so here we are. Um, a little bit of fun stuff here at the end of, of uh, Trailhead DX. Um, we based our demo on the Build a Battle Station app. Um, it's a, a trailhead trail. Um, I'm not going to say which battle station. Um, it is a big one in space that's spherical, and one of the upper management wears a lot of black and uh, is a little bit scary if you disappoint them. So that's, that's the setup. Danny, why don't you um, take us into uh, what we built for the HR department? Sounds good. Now, on our battle station, um, there are a lot of troopers um, and other members of the team. 
Uh, HR came to us because they needed a way to, to quickly highlight people who aren't troopers because it seems like while the troopers can't really shoot straight, their jobs are usually safe, but upper management sometimes gets terminated. So to speak. So to speak. Uh, so they said, look, can you just find a way to hide the troopers? Uh, Danny created this page. He made this button down real small, hide troopers. So he's going to click that button, and what we're going to see is that all of the troopers are going to be hidden. I said what we're going to see is all the troopers are going to be... Right, and you kept emphasizing that I'm the one that built this app. Right. Which is, okay, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be working properly. Ah, it doesn't seem to be working properly. Okay, so clearly we have a problem, and this is not... It didn't catastrophically fail, right? right. We didn't get an exception. It's sort of like a weird bug to fix. Like, it didn't raise an exception or the app didn't crash, but at right. the same time, you see it's not working properly. Right. And it would be the perfect time to use the Apex debugger. Okay, good. So I'm glad that that I think we have the Apex debugger, but we should check first. So, like I said, you want to make sure you have the right license. Um, so, you know, Danny, where would, we, where would we find out if we have a license for the debugger? Uh, right now, we're in the production org. Okay. Um, and in setup, if you go to the Apex debugger setup, and uh, we see that we do have one license available. Okay, thank God. Okay. Okay, so uh, permission set. The permission set that we need to set, um, do you have that uh, also set up? Uh, right now, we have a permission set called IT Developers. And I know I'm assigned to this because I'm a developer in IT. Okay. Um, but there is one system permission that we need to check for, which is Debug Apex. Go over here real quick. And yep, highlighted in yellow. Um, it's checked off, so I think we're good to go. Okay, perfect. So now that we know we've got the license and we've got the permission set, um, Danny's going to move over to Eclipse, and we're actually going to do the work, or he's going to do the work. Um, so here we are in Eclipse. As you can see, he's got a connection to the sandbox. Uh, he's got the page open, the, or sorry, the Apex class open that he wants to debug. Um, and the next step is to open the debug perspective in Eclipse. Uh, and so now that he's done that, this is where the actual work of debugging happens. Now, the next thing to do is actually create a, a connection or, or a debug configuration. Um, so what Danny's doing is he's, he's going into that, that tab, he's creating a new debug configuration um, for, for the Apex debugger. He's going to give it a name. What do you want to call it? Employee view? Employee. And once he gives it a name, the other thing he's going to have to do is connect it to the project that we're using so that um, you know, that project knows what debug configuration to use, the one for the Apex debugger. So there's the project. Right, and you could have multiple. Um, it depends on how many uh, projects you have connected to your local machine from the sandbox. But for the demo, we only have one, so we're just going to click that one. Perfect, perfect. And we're going to apply, and let's start our session. Okay. So, Danny started a debugging session. Danny, what's the what's the first thing you have to do? I mean, this is this is not useful yet. So, right. Um, first, we know that the session is connected because we see the golden gears. Okay. Um, in the call stack. And thank like you, you mentioned, thank you to the demo gods for actually letting us connect. And um, we need to set a breakpoint, like you mentioned, or else the code will execute and the debugger will be useless. Okay. And I know we were getting the bug when we were hiding the troopers, so why don't we go here, line 16, beginning with the method, toggle a breakpoint, and I don't want to miss anything at the very end, so okay. I'm going to set one up right before we return from the method. There we go. Great. And we'll have to make sure to hit the breakpoint. Okay, so yeah, so, so triggering that code is, is what comes next. So now that Danny set a breakpoint, um, we have to enter the, uh, you know, that debugging context. Um, and so to do that, Danny's going to run us through um, an actual action inside of the UI um, that, that triggers, or at least it would, that would run code that's going to move us across that breakpoint. So it looks like, looks like you're ready to go. Yeah, let's try it out. Hide troopers. And you notice how it switched automatically. Now, what's happening, you didn't, you didn't do anything. I got my hands off. Um, because that breakpoint was hit, Eclipse knows that it's got something to show you, so it pops up into the foreground. Let's take a sec and go back, and I want to show you what it actually looks like on the page. And as you can see, it's, it's frozen. And, and Danny, why, why does it look like it's stuck? Yeah, it, um, you saw before that some of the troopers were hidden, but right now we see everything that's going on. Right. And that's because execution is temporarily paused at the breakpoint. So everything's kind of just frozen in the app. Perfect, perfect. All right, so we got the breakpoint. We're we've entered the the you know an active execution context. Um, 
let's go back to Eclipse and, and let's actually okay. well, let's yeah, have Danny good. solve the problem. Right. Um, before we, we get to solving the problem, though, as you can see, there's a lot of, of new um, windows here, new panes. Uh, Danny, could you walk us through what each of those windows are? Sure, yeah. Uh, on the top right-hand corner, we see the variables panel. Um, and we see one list called employees. And we can see which variables are exi exist in our co current context of the execution right now. Right. And we see six elements. Uh, the first one is Kelly. And we saw in the app that that was one of the records that we got. Um, and on the top left-hand corner is what we call the call stack. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, that pretty much shows you which class and which method in that class is being executed and which line. So, so question is. about that. So if, if I had code um, that was recursive, uh, would, would each of those recursive calls show up in the stack? Right, recursive call or different method, whatever this method calls, um, will grow the call stack. And you'll see that method underneath the one that's highlighted right now. OK, and then as those calls return, the call stack would, would shrink? Exactly, yeah. Okay. And in the middle here, you see the code that's actually being executed, which is straightforward. Same with the outline. If you use Eclipse, these are very straightforward. And on the bottom, actually, is a console. And uh, how I like to view it is it's more like a debug log in real time. I see. So, so if that's the case, if it's a debug log in real time, if there are like, like system debug output uh, messages from, from your code, would uh -huh. they show up there too? I had a feeling you'd answer me, ask me that question. So actually, if we step through two more lines of code, we'll actually see that happen. Got uh, it. Here. System debug. There we go. We have a user debug statement uh, with the name and the trooper Boolean. OK. And the truth is, that actually can be useful sometimes. Because if you are not using an interactive debugger, um, you're using a lot of system debug. Um, I, I know it. I've done it. Um, in fact, I have custom, you know, custom ways and little markers I use, all kind of stuff, so I can search the debug log. So if, if you, you know, this is familiar to you. Um, so if you're interactively debugging existing code that already has that, sometimes actually having both at the same time um, can be useful. So it's good that, that as Danny said, this is a, a live version of the debug log. All right, so Danny, we've, we know about all the panels now. Um, Let's, let's solve the problem. Let's actually solve the problem. Let's yeah. squash some bugs. OK. Um, just quickly going over what the code is actually doing. Uh, there's the, we have a for loop that's iterating through the elements in the list. And each element in the list is the employee that we're looking at. And there's an if condition here. Um, so if that employee is a trooper, we're going to remove them from the list. OK. And um, at the very end, we're going to return the modified list. Great. OK. And uh, first one we saw was Kelly. Kelly does not sound like a trooper. Um, so we should see it going back to line 19. Now, what did you just do right there? Uh, it's a little button called Step Into. OK. Um, there's also another button called Resume, which we'll see in a minute. Um, but what that does is you're stepping into the next line of code. Gotcha. So that's that line by line, you know, uh, the, way, so the way you go to the next line of execution or the next breakpoint in the, point of, in the case of Resume. Right. And I want to also highlight that in the variables panel in the top right hand corner, uh, the i, actually, the value of i changed from 0 to 1 because we're in the for loop. And you'll see the dramatic yellow highlighting. And that shows up whenever a variable value changes. Um, so the developer doesn't miss anything key that's going on. And, and that can be really helpful. This is, this is now uh, a step above you know, even a debug log in real time, right? This is a, if there's a certain variable you know you're looking for a change in, um, seeing that yellow show up is a nice way of, of saying, hey, something important that you want to look at just happened. Right, and it's not, uh, yeah, and I think um, everything's working as expected for now. OK. So why don't we try resuming the code? Go for it. Um, and what resuming the code would do is it's going to continue execution until it finds the next breakpoint and stop there. Got it. And for our case, it's line 27, right before we return the modified list. OK. OK, so let's see what happens. Boop. All right, great. Uh, we're stopped at line 27. OK. Um, Can you see what happened? Because it's, I mean, we didn't make any changes, so I'm assuming it's still broken, right? Yes. Um, and we actually see that I stopped when it was four, but we, we know that we had six elements there in the list. There were six, right. So I think there's something wrong with that. And actually, if you look at line 23 here, um, after we remove the employee from the list, the list size decreases, but I just keeps going up and up and up. Ah, uh, so, so essentially you were skipping. It wasn't checking everybody. Right, right, right. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish, let it finish executing. And uh, we'll just quickly get rid of the breakpoints. And um, we're going to decrement i here. OK. And let's try saving this to the server. And there's nothing stopping you from actually 
um, you know, saving things like this. Like you can, you can do the work um, you know, while you're debugging, right? There's, there's nothing preventing that. So right. you're about to save code? Yes, yeah. Um, and, um, but we are going to see a warning message pop up. OK. Um, and it's going to give us a detailed reason for why the warning message is there. Um, and to be precise, um, it's going to stop the session because um, what we, when we save to the server, it, there it is. Um, ah. You can't change organization metadata, including Apex code, during a debugging session. OK, so, so this is nothing to panic about. This is saying that my debug session stopped. Right. And how do, how do I restart it? Um, how we did it before. Uh, we go here, and we'll relaunch. Perfect. OK, so you think you fixed the code. I you, think so, yeah. you saved it, right? Let's, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm a little nervous. Because as I said, our boss, <laughs> not, the, not the most tolerant of failure. People have been known to get choked out. So Danny, you promised me this is going to work. He's like, I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> oh, it's blank that Touché. Okay. Uh, OK, so give it, a sh give it a shot. Roll it up. Let's go. And it OK, works. and Danny was right. I should have had faith. He did solve the problem. Well done. <laughs> but Danny, are we done? Are we really done? I mean, because now I'm going to live another day. He's going to live another day. Uh, can we go have lunch and, uh, and celebrate? We could, but if I'm a good teammate, what I should do is I should terminate my session first, because we saw that we only had one license. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, if we don't give that back to the team, nobody else will be able to use the debugger until we come back. OK, gotcha. So basically, they would come and have to find us at lunch. And right. And then okay. um, terminate how you would do that is you go into Eclipse, um, right. and there's a terminate button there. OK. OK. So what if, what if you're not a good teammate? I mean, I, that would never be you. Huh? But what if you weren't a good teammate? Um, it, it, are, we, are we out of luck? If somebody else does this and they're out to lunch, are we in trouble if we need to debug something? Uh, no, actually, uh, let me show you how that would work. Um, in that case, we could go back to the production org. OK. Uh, let me just refresh the page real quick. Um, and way. when we were looking at the licenses before, um, OK, here we go. Uh, we are now using one of the one Apex debugger license that we had. OK. Um, but under action, you can see revoke license. So. When we are off to lunch, they could simply log in, go to setup, and hit this button here. And now we have the license back for right. the team. And, and if there were multiple sessions, if, if, if we had uh, more than one license and there were multiple sessions and multiple sandboxes, would all of them show up here? Uh, yes. OK, great. Kay. So good. So you hit the button, and then what happens? And if we actually go back to Eclipse, when, when we come back from lunch, uh, we'll see this session terminated. License was revoked by an org admin. Got it. OK, so good. So that's the, that's the don't bother Danny and Vivek at lunch button, AKA re revoke session. OK, with that, uh, that was Danny's demo. Thank you, Danny. That was fantastic. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and close this out um, by talking about some special considerations and then some roadmap stuff. Oh, I have the clicker. I don't know why I'm coming there. Yeah, I don't know you. <laughs> Special considerations. Um, so first thing, um, and I repeated it a bunch of times, uh, bears repeating once more, uh, debugging is allowed only against sandbox pods, right? So that sandbox orgs. A little caveat I'm going to talk about in a second now. That's why I said sandbox pods. Um, there's no support for asynchronous code. So if you've got uh, code inside of a future method or a queuable class or a batch apex, and you've set a breakpoint there, unless you are directly invoking that code, the breakpoint's not going to trigger um, the, the debugger. So you're not going to enter um, uh, you know, a debug session. Um, so some tricks to get around that. If you had a future method, for instance, that you really did want to um, test in the context of, of, of larger scale testing, um, you can actually write a test class. And you can invoke um, code that would invoke that future method and basically bracket it off by test, uh, start test, test, stop test. Because what happens is any asynchronous apex that gets called you know, within those test start, start and stop blocks, it, when you're testing, it actually happens synchronously. So it's kind of a way to cheat around that limitation um, you know, when you're, if you really have to debug a future method. Um, certain actions, as Danny showed us, will kill your debugging session. Uh, it's basically anything that re recompiles metadata. And if you install or uninstall a package, that's going to do it too. Uh, and then beware of orphan sessions. 
be a good colleague. Um, you know, don't, don't bother your friends out to lunch. Um, and at least try to, try to prevent that, right? So those are the considerations. Uh, roadmap. This is the best part. So who here learned about DX over the last two days? Excellent. Uh, who here heard about Scratch Orgs? Even better. So Scratch Orgs are delivered on sandbox hardware, on sandbox pods. So when Salesforce DX goes GA, safe harbor, um, in winter 18, we hope to have the ability then, and if not then, in the next release, to allow you to debug against the Scratch Orgs. Now, this is a nice to have if you are a customer, but it is a thank you, God, to have if you're an ISV partner. And the reason why most ISVs, it's great that we have the ISV customer debugger that lets you debug code in customers' orgs, but if you're making your package, sandboxes don't ever apply or come into your workflow. Um, but if you can debug against a scratch org, you can be an ISV and you can actually be debugging your package as you're building it. That's going to be huge for ISVs. Okay, that's a... I think we have an ISV <laughs> in the audience here. Yes, thank you. Uh, allow debugging from other IDEs. Um, uh, I know Illuminated Cloud and, and our friends at Welcome Suite, um, these, are, these are both great partners, great tooling partners that, um, that provide other IDE options um, you know, than, than force.com IDE. Um, we will be publishing the APIs that we use to, for, for what we do with the debugger. We're making those available to tooling partners. And so we can't control when they add stuff. You might want to talk to the welcome guys over there, say, hey, we want, de we want uh, debug support. Um, They'll be able to add it, though, if they choose to. So when the time is right, make some noise with your favorite IDE developer and um, get them to, to add support for the debugger. And then finally, we want to keep expanding access. And here's what I mean by that. When the Apex debugger was first um, launched, when it first went GA, there was no free option for anybody. Um, over time, we moved to where you know, unlimited and performance edition orgs get one free session. And then, you know, the ISV customer debugger, right, we, we kind of try to open things up that way. You know, we're really trying to move this way, you know, to open access. But part of the problem is it's a, it is very resource, um, resource expensive, right, to, to, to maintain sessions like this. And so, you know, part of, part of why there's a cost is that we are trying to keep, you know, keep the demand real to those who really want it. And so as our platform evolves, we're constantly trying to open this up. So you know, keep, keep your eye on this and um, you know, know that we want this to be something that's used by more and more people. With that, we have a couple minutes. We're happy to take questions. We've got somebody with a microphone. Uh, looks like there's a question close by right back there. Hello? Yes. Uh, is the debugger a separate plugin to the Eclipse? Excellent question, yes. So there are two plugins. If you wanted to install the force.com IDE, you would download Eclipse, and then it used to be just one plugin that you'd get. The debugger is a separate plugin. So make sure you go through the update process. Uh, and good news is, um, if you want to learn about how to actually use any of this, the force.com IDE developer guide has a wonderful walkthrough that'll show you everything that you need to do, including where to download plugins and all that. If I have one more, uh, more than one sandbox, can I use uh, the debugger on different sandboxes? You can use the debugger on different sandboxes, but they have to be parented from the same production org because the license is actually attached to that production org. And then remember, it's one session at a time. So if you're using that session and someone else wants to debug, or if even you wanted to debug two things simultaneously in different sandboxes, you can't do that. One sandbox, one session. Right. Next question. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello, sir. And I'll give you. Hello, sir. And the question from your friends from the Welcome Suite. How and when we can get the public API for the debugger? Ah, thank you. <laughs> uh, soon. <laughs> sometime, with, sometime within the next six months, Safe Harbor. Uh, talk to me afterwards, and I'll connect you with the right folks. Next question. So it doesn't work with Developer Console, right? No, no. It does not work with Developer Console. It's force.com IDE only for now. Talk to the Welcome Suite folks about future. Yes? Does the developer need a login in the production org? 
Technically, no. You need a login in the sandbox. Um, and uh, let me talk to you offline just to see how you, to tell you how you do that. It, it's, it's not that hard. One more question. Does this it work last with one. a DX? Uh, not yet, but that's what I was saying on the roadmap. Um, once Salesforce DX goes GA, again, safe harbor about this, our intent is that you can uh, run the Apex debugger against scratch orgs because scratch orgs are delivered on sandbox hardware, right? All right, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for making us okay. the last session for you at Trailhead DX. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Danny.